Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're coming to you with another rusted gun. This is a Henry uh, Blue 22 lever action rifle. Now just from looking at it uh, at a distance, it, it looks perfectly normal, it looks fine, but the problem is on the lever itself. So if we zoom in and take a close look on the lever, you'll see some surface rust building up there. Um, try to do a little light scratching, use a stainless steel scrubber on it, and uh, it didn't really want to come off. So uh, we're going to work on that today. But unlike some of my other videos, if you haven't watched them yet, you know, we've been trying just random products to see can we take surface rust off of some, you know, fairly low value guns. Um, but today I'm doing what you've been suggesting through all my other videos and everyone is saying boil and card and doing it the right way. So we are going to try a, a boiling and carding method. I do not have a carding wheel, um, but we're going to try the four alt steel wool technique. And before we get started removing the lever from the gun, we're going to have this guy start boiling some distilled water because that's what we're going to use to uh, to boil the lever in uh, once we get it removed. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, on the breech side of the gun, we have two uh, flathead screws here. We're going to get those removed. Same thing on the reverse, have two other screws. Also, on the back, the screw we need here to remove the stock, we're going to go ahead and take that off as well. Now, with this screw out, we should be able to slide that stock right off the back side just like that. You should be able just to lift up here on the back and actually slide this portion free. Now, you'll notice inside, and it, it may be better to remove it now uh, before you put it back on, um, this portion here will come out. So we've got those two pieces. We're gonna set those to the side for now. Now the next part, we have got a pin here, um, and that is really all that's holding um, this lever in place and so we just want to remove that pin if you have some actual punches I suggest you use them and what you can't see is I actually have a wood block under my towel here and on the other side So there's actually a gap under here to allow that pin to slip out You can see here the pin fell out, but now my little uh, Allen wrench is jammed in there So you're gonna need to relieve that pressure a little bit by pulling the lever down just a little bit and once you do that, this will come free. Okay, so once you've got the pin removed here, I'm kind of having to hold everything in place just for the sake of showing you what you need to do here. Um, you've got a little tab sticking out right there. What you wanna do is keep that held down. And then all you're gonna do is lift the lever all the way back and around, flip that up out of the way. And now we have our lever. And you can see here, this rust on the lever I can scrape on that, doesn't really go anywhere. Um, underside looks fairly decent. You've got a small spot right here on the inside. And then here on the, the back side, you can really see in the light, the, uh, the rust as it continues around. So yeah, we're gonna try to get that cleaned up. So as I said, I've never actually done this technique and all the information that I have on it is from you guys in the comments as well as what I've researched on my own online. What I've read is used uh, distilled water. So I'm not really sure if the rust is gonna turn black or if it just is gonna get a deeper red with time. Um, but we're just gonna start in that 10 to 30 minute range and I'm gonna pull it out and uh, then we'll start begin the carding process once it's cool enough for me to handle. And so the science behind it is that boiling rust in water actually converts the red rust into black oxide. Um, that o black oxide then once polished with say a carding wheel or some very fine steel wool actually converts it to where it protect the metal itself. And please correct me in the comments below. Um, but uh, we've got our four all steel wool ready. And then also per my research on this, the steel wool itself actually needs to be degreased with naphtha or acetone. Um, so I have naphtha on hand. So I'll you know soak that steel wool in it before I get started with the carding process. Okay, so this is after boiling for one hour um, in the distilled water solution. And we're just gonna start to work that uh, steel wool over the rust. 
and see what kind of results we get from that. You can kind of tell here, um, some little staining here, but the red rust, as far as what I can tell, has been removed. And uh, it's my understanding that this may take a couple of boiling processes. Because right now what we're doing is removing that outer layer of rust. And what we'll want to do is come back then again and remove the next layer possibly. Uh, it looks to me like this is going through the bluing. Those first few places I did looked like it took the rust off, but this is actually a much lighter color now on some of these other spots. And it's got me a little bit concerned. It's got me a little concerned, but we're not gonna give up on this yet. I'm gonna finish wiping over the whole thing, going to put it back in some boiling water for about 10 minutes to degrease it and get this naphtha off. And uh, we'll pull it out and take a look at it and that should give us a much better view of the metal itself. Okay, so this is after 45 minutes of a second boiling. There is a, there is a definite improvement over what we had as far as rust goes, that's a good view. But you can see we had some uh, more uh, brown rust appear through here. And I'm, I'm fairly confident that I got that scrubbed off good the first time. So you can also see some thin places in the bluing. That's not what I expected following that guideline of boiling and carding at all. And so I am going to go over it one more time. We'll have to scrub it again, boil it again, and see what product comes out, and then determine are we going to um, uh, cold blue it or not. So let's get to scrubbing again. Yeah, that, that's definitely through the bluing right there. That's what we have here on this end too. It appears to be in the curves. So yeah, I was convinced that this was a, uh, a sound method, boiling and carding with steel wool, but I may have uh, been too aggressive it could be something with the naphtha. I may not have boiled long enough, boiled too long, but that just appears to be worsening as we go. I tell you, a lot of comments have uh, have surfaced on my last videos that four alt steel wool is the way to go, and that I should not be using those copper scrubbers for my other videos. Four alt is the right way to do things. Um, I'm not going to argue that whether it's better or worse, but I am going to say this. This is messy. You can see all these metal fibers that are, that are just coming off of this steel wool in my hand and all over the metal here. And boiling did not remove that. You can see that when I took the, took the lever out. I don't know. It's just, it's just messy. That copper, yes, you get a residue that comes off with a, a solvent, but you don't get the just the trash left over. So anyway, something to consider, I guess, but if this is the right way, I'm sure it must be worth it. Everything appears to be good. I'm gonna give it one final going over, uh, stick it back in the bowl, and we'll check on it in about 15 to 20 minutes. And that's, that's if there's no red rust that shows up, that's gonna be the last time that we bowl and use this, we're gonna get it cleaned up and we're gonna evaluate our best option for this missing, uh, or for this thin bluing here. So, at this point, uh, the lever's in no worse shape than it was. It, it did have rust on it now, it just has um, 
a faded bluing or uh, the bluing is becoming transparent on it, whatever you want to say, worn bluing, no bluing. Um, <clears throat> which brings us to the point now of what are we going to do to fix that problem. So I've got it boiling now and what I'm looking for when I pull this out is if there's any water beat it up still on it after a good shake. So you can see a little bit right there there's some water beating, um, some wet spots. Um, then it still needs to to stay in the water. Uh, basically you want the water to flash off completely. Um, any beaded water or droplets of water indicates that there's still some oil residue. I'm guessing from the naphtha, uh, but I thought the point of the naphtha on the steel wool was to degrease. Um, when there are no longer any water droplets, and that's been back on the bowl about 10 minutes, uh, we're going to pull it out and I'm gonna try to touch up the bluing. So I've got here some Birchwood Casey Super Blue. Uh, are we gonna be able to blend it with the existing bluing that's still on? And I think with the addition of some dry steel wool um, at the end of the process, we can kind of blend slash polish it all in together. Okay, so we just took our part out of the uh, boiling water. This seems to be beating up. If you look down the edge of that, it's got a peculiar look to it. But it's getting cool enough now I can touch it. Next step is back into the water and we're gonna neutralize the bluing and we'll pull it back out after a couple of minutes and see if we need to go over it again. Well, I gotta say, this was certainly unexpected. Um, where I tried to blue at is now white. The end down here didn't do too bad. Uh, especially the back side there. You can still see a little bit. We're going to try it again. A little more bluing. I mean, it completely goes away when you wipe over it, but that water sure just absolutely turned it white. Not going to get too worried about it yet. I'm going to trust the process. All right, into the hot water one more time. Okay, we are back out of the water now. Um, you can tell, still tell the color difference where the bluing uh, doesn't match. So what we're gonna try, we're gonna put a little bluing on a piece of clean, dried, steel wool, and we're gonna just try to massage that in and blend that together. Now this is still quite hot, and we're just gonna start blending. I mean, it certainly looks good when it's wet. Can't argue that, that looks fantastic. Uh, so that being said, I'm fairly confident when this whole process is over and we oil it, we're gonna look pretty good. Okay, we'll make sure now that we get every surface done, we're gonna re-submerge it in our hot water. Now, I'm not leaving it in there for any length of time. I'm basically dunking it in, uh, maybe a minute or two, pulling it back out. So there's what we're looking at now with the steel wool scrub. Okay, I'm back out of the water now, and uh, I think that was the trick. So taking a paper towel now, just a dry paper towel, nothing's on it, and I'm just gonna wipe over this And that's what we've got now. I'm actually very, very impressed with how that uh, color turned out on that. I think once we oil it, everything will be fine. So that is, uh, that's two goes with the bluing. Um, I want to do it one more time, but it's kind of one of those deals where I think I need to stop while I'm ahead. Let's just go ahead and do it one more time. And I'm not gonna spend much on this at all. I'm just gonna rub over it really good. Almost out of water. I've actually used nearly a full gallon of water 
just because I haven't had a lid on the pot, so I'm losing it. Guys, I gotta tell you, I'm kind of impressed with myself. That paled out a little bit, but it's when we oil it, that's gonna darken up. I mean, that looks just like the Birchwood Casey uh, gun scrubber does when you uh, spray down a you know a factory gun barrel. It's just degreased with the boiling water. So um, I'm gonna do one final step with this, and many of you are thinking I'm gonna put oil on it. I'm actually not. I'm gonna do a kerosene soak overnight, uh, about 24 hours, to disperse any more water uh, that's possibly in it or um, in the bluing process somehow. Then we will take it off, oil it, reassemble the gun. Our, uh, our lever here has been soaking in this jar of kerosene now for right at 24 hours. And again, the reason we did that is to make sure we displaced uh, all the water by that uh, immersion and soak in it. So you can see um, the difference we have here. We are gonna towel it dry before we uh, reassemble. And because this portion here at the top won't be very accessible um, once the gun has been put back together, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this upper portion here with some Rimmel um, just to go ahead and get a protective coat on it. Okay. Next, we want to get the lever installed um, back into the receiver here. You have a hook here on the lever and you want that hook to go around this pin uh, that's forward of the trigger. So we're gonna start it off pointed toward the front of the gun just a little to get over that. And right there, you can see how it kind of pivots on it. All right, then, and I guess you should have done this before we started, go ahead and cock the gun. Make sure it's fully cocked. You've got your lock bar here. This lock bar has a spring beneath it that allows you to push up and down with that spring. And what you wanna do, if you can see, if you can possibly see from the inside, there's our lever moving. I'm gonna lever it all the way forward here. And then I'm gonna push down the lock bar and that allows my lever to come up on top where it belongs, where we ride in that position. All right, from there, what we wanna do now is try to align the pin hole in the lever with the place here where we took the pin out. Okay, once you have your hole aligned, you're gonna take your pin, you're gonna insert that from the back side, get it in. Now, pin's in place. We're gonna go ahead and place our bolts on top of the receiver. I'm gonna cock the gun again, makes life a little easier. Get this put down and move your uh, lever down a little bit to line it up with this notch and mash it down flat. And now we're ready to put our cover back on, get our four screws in it, uh, reinstall the uh, butt stock, and this project will be almost done. Well, everyone, there you have it. Certainly didn't go quite the way I planned for or expected, but I think a lot of lessons were learned. So I tried the boiling card method and uh, I'm pretty sure mistakes were made. But uh, if you've got any helpful tips, be sure you put them in the comments down below. I certainly appreciate that. If you liked what you saw, uh, leave a comment, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, check out my playlist for other gun cleaning videos and any other um, types of content that I put out that you might be interested in. But like always, we'll catch you next time right here on the J-Line.